Hey, yeah, g'day viewers. Now that's a bit of an intro with a you know, glass mucking around on the wires, so just sort of had a bit of a look in the shed a couple of projects that I've got on the go. Yeah, I started cleaning up one day then yeah, chucked a fair bit of stuff out. So the place is a lot, lot tidier than it used to be. I mean, as I mean by tidy, it means I can actually uh, walk around in here. So, this is one project. It's an RC plane, one of those nitro ones, so it's just set up with a radio gear, the servos. But the next part is to uh, fit this OS four stroke engine. And uh, the other thing I was going to have a look at down here is an old Phillips battery charger. So I thought that'd be uh, an interesting item to get going. Uses a mercury vacuum tube as a rectifier and uh, a couple of ballast lamps to regulate the current running to the battery. This is for links to set it up for how many battery cells you're charging. I think it's about on the first link it's about charging three cells or so and then the other link is about six to eight cells, something like that. Someone has at one stage has run uh, figure eight flex but I'll open this item up and uh, replace all the cord and try and make it look a little bit more original way it would have been. Been trying to find some information on this battery charger. Made by Philips in Holland. And I think it's probably made him in say maybe the 1920s or 30s or something. I'll just turn it around. You can see the main rectifier bulb and it also has two uh, Berettas it's a device to maintain steady current flow, uses an iron filament in a hydrogen gas atmosphere.
and this one is missing, so it's been substituted with a sort of standard Edison screw lamp. Anyway, I had a bit of a hunt around uh, boxes of valves and things I've got and I found a, a very similar type of Beretta. I'll just put it down here and we'll have a bit of a better look at it. I pull the transformer out of the case and the primary windings are 6 ohms so they seem to be okay and also did a insulation resistance and that's all good too. No sign of leakage in the windings to ground so I think this transformer is still intact and should be good to go. And also I checked for rectifier bulb. And the filament on that is intact as well. If a bulb set this unit uses, it's a uh, Phillips 367 rectifier and a Phillips 340 uh, Beretta. Or a pair of them, and I'll check those ones out, and they all seem to be okay. So, next thing to do is to now uh, rewire this unit, check it all out, and uh, reassemble it, and should be good to go again. Yeah, those hawks are making a bit of noise out there. Yeah, I'm just analysing the transformer, so I've got it energised, and just measuring the uh, filament voltage for the rectifier. Yeah, nearly 2 volts, which is about right for that type. And I've just got it going through a variac. So this battery charger is a 240 volt one and then I'm just monitoring the current. Just inspecting for any uh, shorts, shorter turns that may cause excessive current draw and, and I'll check the windings in a while to see if they're getting hot or anything. But yeah, no, so far it's looking pretty good. I've replaced all the bulbs, so I'm just going to run the voltage up and you know, just check the filament, make sure that's working.
180 volts. Okay, 240, 247 volts. Yep, certainly activity in that bulb. Uh, the filament's running. Yeah, my next thing to do is a load test. Right, I've got the voltmeter set up on this battery here. We we'll use that as a test load and we'll uh, just uh, watch for a rectifier and see if it ionizes. Right, energize now. Sending volts. Probably a little bit much for a small battery like this one, but on a larger car battery it will probably be okay. Righto folks, that'll probably do for now, but thanks very much for watching and sorry it's been a little while since I've put any videos together. Well, till next time, stay safe.